Hello, today we will address a wide variety of topics related to the adolescent. Let's begin. I'm going to start with the growth and development of the adolescent. This is a period of rapid growth. Males develop more lean muscle mass. Females increase body fat percentage in preparation for childbearing. Puberty begins because of hormonal changes. It follows a certain pattern. Primary sex characteristics are the internal and external organs that carry out the reproductive functions. Secondary sex characteristics are changes that occur throughout the body, but do not have a direct role in reproductive functions. The primary sex characteristics in females are the ability to develop and release an ovum. The FSH stimulates estrogen production early in puberty, but doesn't cause ovulation until mid-puberty. The primary sex characteristics in males is the development of viable sperm. FSH stimulates testicular cells, secondary sex characteristics stimulating the production of viable sperm, also known as spermatogenesis. FSH and LH act on different cells. LH increases the secretion and production of testosterone. The development occurs in a set sequence. Tanner identifies five stages. These result from an increase in hormones. Please refer to your textbook for the pictures and the different stages. Sexual development. First, I will talk about females in sequence. The first sign of puberty begins anywhere between 18 and 13 years of age. And the first sign is breast bud development in the areola and the area around the nipple they protrude. It's generally complete at menarche. It's not uncommon for breasts to be asymmetrical. Height and weight increase next. Pubic hair, then axillary hair develop after bud development and increase throughout middle adolescence. It is normal to have a vaginal discharge called physiologic leucorrhea in early puberty associated with uterine development. Menarche. The age range here is 10 and a half to 15 years of age, with the average age being 12 years and eight months for Caucasians and 12 years and two months for African Americans. First menstruation typically occurs about two years after bud development. Pregnancy can occur at this time. Usually they are irregular and they may not ovulate regular and ovulation usually occurs approximately six to 14 months after the first period. Menarche is the hallmark of late puberty. Developmental delay occurs if there is no breast development by 13 or no menarche four years after bud development. The growth spurt is between nine and a half and 14 and a half years of age. Growth and height generally ceases two to two and a half years after menarche. Generally, girls don't grow more than two inches after menarche. Excuse me. Ninety-five percent of adult height is reached at the onset of menarche. On average, girls will grow anywhere from two to eight inches and gain fifteen point five to fifty-five pounds during adolescence. Unfortunately, most teen girls are not happy with their appearance. Sexual development in males, the sequence. Growth spread occurs anywhere from 10 and a half to 16 years of age, approximately two years later than girls. Height growth stops approximately 18 to 20 years of age, and they grow about four to 12 inches, and they gain a height of about 15, I beg your pardon. They grow, they gain weight in terms of 15.5 to 16 pounds. So their height is 4 to 12 inches and their weight is 15 and a half to 66 pounds. Lean muscle mass grows throughout puberty but peaks at early puberty. The first puberty changes are testicular enlargement followed by thinning, reddening, and loosening of the scrotal tissue. This begins about nine and a half to 14 and a half years of age. This is about a year before the growth spurt. Sexual development is considered delayed if there is no testes scrotal changes by age 14. Pubic hair begins to grow early and continues until 18 to 20 years of age. 
facial hair usually starts um, with the upper lip and middle adolescence about two years after pubic hair develops. Rapid increase in height will occur. Uh, voice changes also begin due to growth of the laryngeal cartilage. The ability to ejaculate occurs about a year after testicular enlargement and pubic hair development, and viable sperm may occur at this time. They also may have nocturnal emissions, which is a normal physiologic reflex to ejaculate the buildup of semen. Make sure males know that this is not bedwetting and this is a natural occurrence that occurs when sleeping. The penis will lengthen and widen during puberty, but there is a significant increase during the mid to late puberty. Facial, axillary, chest, and pubic hair thicken and increase in amount throughout puberty, beginning primarily in mid-adolescence. Gynecomastia, this is something that can occur anywhere from 15 to 17 years of age. It is breast enlargement and tenderness. This occurs in about 70% of boys in mid-puberty, usually disappears about two years later. Um, if this does not disappear, um, they can actually have uh, liposuction to have it removed. Uh, and please note there are two uh, boxes in your textbook that address the sequence of puberty changes for both males and females. So you're gonna wanna take a peek at that. Male and females. Uh, so these are things that apply to both. The apocrine sweat glands start functioning during adolescence. So you're gonna notice an increase in body odor um, the eccrine sweat glands continue to function. In general, the growth spurt begins about 10-ish in girls and about 12-ish in boys. Bone growth follows a linear pattern. The growth in length of the extremities and neck precedes growth in other areas. Because these parts are the first to reach adult length, the hands and the feet appear larger than normal during adolescence. Um, there's an increase in the hip and chest breadth. This takes place in a few months, followed several months later by an increase in shoulder width. These changes are followed by increases in length of the trunk and depth of the chest. The sequence of changes is responsible for the characteristic long-legged gawky appearance of the early adolescent. So first your feet, then legs, length, then trunk, then shoulders, and lastly, the chest. So basically they're gonna outgrow their shoes first, then their pants in terms of length, and then their shirts last. So there is a table in your textbook for the growth and development of the adolescent, um, and we're going to cover that next. So early adolescence, around 11 to 14 years of age. Growth, um, rapidly accelerating growth reaches peak velocity. And here we're seeing those secondary sex characteristics appear. Cognition, they are uh, starting to develop that abstract thought. Um, they're groping for their new values. Um, they do compare uh, normality with the peers of their same sex. Identity, they're very preoccupied with their body changes. They are trying out various roles. Um, their measurement of attractiveness um, is really determined by uh, whether their peers accept or reject them. And they generally have a conformity to the group norms. Relationships with the parents. Um, here, they're starting to define those independent dependence boundaries. Um, there really is not a major conflict with parents at this point. Relationship with peers, here they seek peer affiliations to counter instability generated by rapid changes. Um, there is an upsurge of close idealized friendships with members of their same sex. Um, sexuality, uh, here there's a self-exploration and evaluation, really limited dated, more group dating um, and limited intimacy. Uh, psychological health, here they have wide mood swings, lots of daydreaming. Um, they may be very moody and have temper outbursts um, and just very, you know, angry. Uh, uh, they may be very outwardly angry. Middle adolescence, this is roughly 15 to 17. 
uh, growth. So growth, it's sort of decelerating in girls. Um, typically they're reaching um, the stature at this point is about 95% of the adult height and the secondary sex characteristics um, are very well advanced in terms of their development. Uh, cognition, they're developing that capacity for that abstract thinking even more so. They enjoy um, intellectual discussions. They're very idealistic. Um, they're very concerned with political and social problems. In terms of identity, they're modifying their body image. Um, they're very self-centered and very narcissistic. Um, they have a very rich fantasy life and tend to be very idealistic. Um, although they are able to perceive future implications of current behavior and decisions, whether they apply it or not is definitely a different story or can be a different story. Relationships with parents. So this is where we have that major conflicts over independence and control. Um, this may seem very critical. This is really that low point in the parent-child relationship. This is the greatest push for emancipation and disengagement psychologically for the children. Um, relationship with peers. Here you've got that strong need to, for identity to affirm your self-image. Often the behavioral standards are set by their peer group. Um, acceptance by peers is extremely important and fear of rejection is really palpable. Um, in terms of sexuality, um, they will have multiple uh, plural relationships. Um, typically, uh, how they identify sexually is um, determined at this point. Um, some know earlier. Uh, so if they are homosexual or any other um, gender identity, typically they will know by this time. Um, they definitely have those feelings of being in love and have tentative establishment of relationships. Psychological health. There's more of a tendency towards inner experiences. They tend to be more introspective. Um, they tend to withdraw when they're upset or they're hurt. Um, they also have a difficult time asking for help. Late adolescence, so this is 18 to 20 here. Their growth, they're physically mature, structurally and reproductive growth is pretty much almost complete. Cognition, that abstract thought is established. They can perceive and act on long-term goals. Um, they're able to view problems comprehensively. Um, identity, their body image and gender role definition is relatively secure. Um, they have a mature sexual identity. Um, they have a st stable self-esteem. Um, they're comfortable with their growth. Their social roles are defined and articulated. Um, the relationship with their parents now, that emotional and physical separation from their parents is typically completed. Um, the independence from the family is occurring. And so now there's a lot less conflict. Um, relationship with peers. Um, here, the peer group recedes in importance in terms of now they know they have more independent individual friendships versus the whole group. Um, uh, relationships are characterized by giving and sharing. Uh, sexuality, they form stable relationships and attachments to an other. Um, there is a growing capacity for mutuality and reciprocity. Um, dating is something that you're gonna see more individually as paired dating versus the plurality of dating that we saw previously. Um, intimacy often involves commitment rather than exploration and romanticism. Psychological health, um, really they have more of a constant emotional state. Um, and if they do become angry, they are able to um, control that anger and hide it a little bit better. A little bit about some other developmental characteristics that we see in adolescents, just so you know, these are not in your textbook, but I think it's important that you do know them anyways, which is why um, I'm mentioning them here in your lecture. 
So teens um, tend to be very self-centered and they have a couple of patterns of self-centered thinking. These are number one, uh, the imaginary audience. And this is the thought that everybody is watching them and everybody is focused on what they are doing. The next pattern of self-centered thinking is the personal fable. And here uh, they believe that their feelings and experiences are completely unique to them, that uh, no other person has ever experienced the feelings that they are feeling as a teenager. And lastly um, is the feelings of invulnerability. And this is the thought of it will not happen to me. And this is what the dangerous one because uh, here adolescents can be reckless, they can have poor impulse control, and they don't believe anything bad is going to happen to them. And so this puts them at a high risk for accidents and injury. Okay. Uh, nutrition. Growth can double in adolescence. So nutrition requirements for iron, calcium, zinc, and protein are significantly increased at this time. Girls are especially prone to iron deficiency anemia uh, during menarche. Um, and a deficiency in folic acid, B6, vitamin A, calcium, and zinc are also present, um, especially in that lower socioeconomic areas. Uh, girls need roughly, and of course this is dependent on um, their activity, uh, but roughly around uh, 2200 calories during puberty. Boys, again, it depends on their activity, um, early on about 2,500, in the middle about 3,000, and then late is about 2,900. Uh, please note that high calorie fat, sugar, cholesterol, and sodium are found in all dietary um, areas for the different races and genders, regardless of socioeconomic status. So it doesn't matter how much money you have or what race you are, um, the not good dietary um, components tend to be present. Uh, approximately 18.5% of children and adolescents are obese, 5.6% uh, are severely obese, um, and then another 166 are overweight. So please note, I'm not gonna ask you the specific um, percentages, but it is just important to be aware that there is a problem with um, being overweight and obesity in our uh, pediatric population. At the other end of the scale, um, we are going to see uh, issues with anorexia and about uh, 0.5 to 1% of teens have anorexia, nervosa, more in the middle and upper class and typically Caucasian females. Um, less than 10% of people with anorexia nervosa are male. Uh, often what happens is they um, eat lots of fast food, they tend to skip breakfast. And please note that uh, they are very concerned with their body image. Busy schedules tend to affect their diet. Um, I already mentioned this before, their peer group does give them a sense of belonging. Um, let's talk a little bit about physical activity. Um, really physical activity, nearly half of students engage in some type of activity uh, that made them sweat for 20 minutes. Some have physical activity daily or almost daily as part of games, work, play, transportation, recreation, PE or other planned activities. Um, after 10th grade, though, many do not have required PE in high school. The recommendation is moderate to vigorous activity at least three days a week for at least one hour. Also note that in terms of sleep, it's not uncommon for a teenager to need 10 to 12 hours of sleep during the growth spurt. After that, they require roughly nine hours. So it's not uncommon for teens to go to bed very late and therefore they wake up very late. Some areas of stress in adolescence include body image, sexuality conflicts, 
academic pressures, competitive pressures, relationships with parents, siblings, and peers, finances, decisions about the present and future roles, career planning, and then also ideologic conflicts. Use of tobacco, alcohol, and other substances. Statistically, experimentation with substances is common among U.S. adolescents. By the 12th grade, 60.4% of students have used alcohol, 28.9% have smoked cigarettes, and 356 have tried cannabis in the last 30 days. Sexuality has decreased over the years, but there has been an increase in HIV and STIs. Unintentional pregnancy has dropped. Schools teach sex education usually around the ninth grade, as we talked about before, it is a progression. Um, teens do need to understand the dangers of alcohol, drug use, smoking, and vaping. They need to see that STIs, pregnancy, and addiction can happen to them. As a nurse, um, we need to assess all of these areas, and we need to talk about the different ways people can be sexually active and how have they been sexually active with others or if they have been sexually active with others. We don't wanna say boyfriend or girlfriend, we wanna say partner, that way um, we are not being judgmental. Um, you wanna ask if their friends or, or themselves, but I often like to start with if their friends smoke, drink, vape, use drugs, chew Tabasco, have any body piercings or tattoos. Uh, the issue with piercings and tattoos is that um, if they are not done properly, they can develop uh, bloodborne pathogens or infections. Um, you wanna discuss why it's dangerous. We don't wanna lecture. You also wanna discuss um, what effects different kinds of things can have towards themselves, school, work, friends, and family. Again, like I said, do not lecture. Roughly 70% of 12th graders used alcohol in the last month. 40% uh, used cigarettes in the last month and 46 used cannabis in the last month. In adolescents, after injury, suicide is the leading cause of death. Nearly 17.2% of high school students reported seriously considering suicide during the last year with female students um, being more likely than male students to consider a suicide attempt. You need to assess if they are feeling down, blue, sad, or depressed. Do they think about hurting themselves? What do they think about doing? Do they have access to the method? When would they do it? The more thought out the plan, the higher the risk. If somebody tells you that they are suicidal, it is a legal mandate to report it. Gay and lesbian children are especially at risk, particularly if they live in communities that are not accepting of homosexual people. The most common method used in completed suicides is firearms. The most common method used in attempted suicides is overdose. Social isolation is the most significant factor for distinguishing a person who will attempt to kill themselves from a teen who will complete a suicide. You wanna assess changes in behavior and school. If they are giving away belongings, the presence of a gun in a household increases the risk of suicide by fivefold and homicide by threefold. <clears throat> Excuse me. A male who has guns at home is the highest risk to commit suicide. Let's talk about some injury prevention during adolescence. So obviously here they have a need for independence and freedom. They are testing that independence. They may be able to drive. They've got that feeling of instructability. Um, they are in sports. They might attempt hazardous speed, uh, feats. Um, so first things first, motor vehicle or any kind of vehicle related accidents because it could be they weren't driving, but maybe they were walking. Um, so the pedestrian, you wanna encourage safe pedestrian behavior. If they are walking at night, walk with a friend. Um, if you think, feel like someone's following you, go to the nearest place with people. Don't walk in secluded areas. You wanna walk in well-traveled areas. Um, 
you want to uh, promote uh, appropriate behavior if they're riding in a motor vehicle. Again, no, not having your arms hanging off the window or anything like that. If they are driving, they should have driver's education. Um, obviously no street racing or playing chicken. You want to make sure the vehicle is in good working order. Um, if they are using uh, two-wheeled vehicles, uh, make sure that they are wearing the safety helmets and long clothes. Uh, hopefully they don't fall, but if they do fall, you don't want their skin hitting the pavement. Um, and again, uh, reinforcing the dangers of drug use and alcohol use, not just in general, but especially don't be doing that when they are um, driving or riding in any kind of vehicle. So we wanna discourage that at all times. Drowning, you wanna teach people to swim. If they don't swim, um, really uh, they need to learn how to swim. Uh, they shouldn't be in water without knowing how to swim. Uh, teaching water safety, uh, again, making sure that the water is deep enough to dive in if they're gonna dive into it. Always swimming with a companion um, in terms of burns. Um, so we already talked about the gasoline and electrical fires. So being very careful when they're around those kinds of areas. The extra thing that we need to worry about here are tanning beds. Um, so we really wanna discourage exposure to um, tanning beds because again, they can get a sunburn and these kinds of things can actually promote skin cancer. So definitely use sunscreen. Poisoning, uh, again, I probably have said this three times now, really educate them in the hazards of any kind of drug use or alcohol use. And when we say drugs, it's also prescription medications that are not intended for them. Okay, so it's not just the illegal drugs we're talking about. It's things that are legal, uh, but they may be finding in their parents or their friends' medicine cabinets. Falls, again, just teaching general safety measures here. Um, hopefully they're not doing any kind of wild death defying feats where they can fall. Um, and then bodily damage. Um, a lot of times they will be participating in sports. So you wanna make sure that they are wearing the appropriate safety gear when they are participating in sports. Like if they are playing football, all of the appropriate pads and helmets. Um, Again, uh, you wanna make sure that um, we are paying attention to any signs and symptoms of depression um, and monitor for signs and symptoms of suicide or suicidal thoughts. Uh, if they wear glasses or contact lenses or hearing aids, just making sure that they understand how to use those safely. And um, really just encouraging kids to be safe and apply principles of safety and prevention of injury. Family-centered care related to the adolescent. So here uh, we want to encourage parents to accept the adolescent as a unique individual, respect the adolescent's ideas, likes and dislikes and wishes, be involved with school functions and attend the adolescent's performances, whether it's a sporting event or school play. Listen, try to be open to teenagers' views, even when they disagree with the parents. Um, you wanna try to avoid criticism about no-win topics. Provide opportunities for choosing options and accept natural consequences of their choices. Allow young adults to learn by doing, even when the choices and methods are different from what the adults do. So there are more than one right way of doing things. Uh, provide the adolescent with clear, reasonable limits, clarify the house rules, and then the consequences for breaking them. Let society's rules and consequences teach responsibility outside of the home. Allow increasing independence within limitations of safety and well-being. Respect the adolescent's privacy. Try to share the adolescent's feelings of joy or sorrow. Respond to feelings as well as words. Be available to answer questions, give information, and provide companionship. Try to make communication clear. 
Avoid comparisons with siblings. Assist adolescents in selecting appropriate career goals and preparing for adult roles. Welcome adolescents' friends into the home and treat them with respect. Provide unconditional love and acceptance. Be willing to apologize when you've made a mistake. Be aware that adolescents are subject to turbulent, unpredictable behaviors. They are struggling with independence. They're extremely sensitive to feelings and behaviors that affect them. They may receive a different message from what was actually sent. And also remember, their friends are extremely important and they do have a strong need to belong. Thank you very much. This concludes uh, the content for the adolescent. Uh, please remember to watch the other presentations that are due this week.